everyone. I had a few people asking how my PC build went and what sort of laptop or PC they should buy to animate with. So this video is going to be a mixture of the two. There isn't a simple answer to what you should use because everyone's budget and what software they want to use is different. But when I was looking into my own PC build, there were a few things I did that helped me to figure out what I needed. So when I first started animation at uni, I was recommended a MacBook Pro because the uni used Macs and they were very good. It was expensive. I think in total it came to around £1,200 with student discount. But since I needed it for uni, I considered it as an investment and I bought one. It handled all my first year work fine. It was nice and lightweight and easy to carry into uni or travel home with it so I could still do work if I needed to. But in my second year, the uni changed all their very good Macs to PC. As I improved my animation skills and my projects became bigger and more detailed, in my third year, my MacBook really started to struggle and I realized that I was going to have to start saving now to get something new. I held out as long as possible, but when I was making Ghost Stories Part 2, the lag on my laptop was unbearable. It took forever to load and save a project. Lip sync was almost impossible because I couldn't play back the animation without having it stutter or skip frames. If I wanted to edit a vlog or render a five minute video, it would take around an hour to finish. And while I did get other things finished in the meantime, it was a pain when I'd notice a mistake or that something needed fixing and I'd have to go back, fix it, and then re-render and wait another hour again. So during that summer, I started looking for a replacement and what prices were like online for laptops and PCs. Since I'd graduated from university, I wasn't doing much traveling. I was still living and working at home and I had a office set up in my room to work from. I still had my MacBook if I really needed to work away, so I went with PC. If you travel a lot, you're probably going to want to go with a laptop. After that, I made a list of all my essential software. What I use to animate, record and edit my videos, along with any other software or programs that I wanted to add to the build in the future. After that, I went to their websites and had a look at their recommended specifications for each. And this is what I used for my minimum requirements for my build. I needed the PC to be able to handle pretty much anything I could throw at it animation, editing, streaming, which I wanted to do more of. After that, I started looking at build guides, walkthroughs, and part recommendations on YouTube. I would highly recommend these channels as they really helped me understand a lot of the terms and what I would need to do when building a PC. I'd been saving for a few years by this point and I wanted this PC to last me, so I was willing to spend a little more. I picked up most of my parts around Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but unfortunately there was a CPU shortage at the time, which pushed the price up a little bit. And overall, I spent just under £1,600. So this is the parts list for my PC, and if I was going to rebuild the PC, the only thing I'd change would be the case. Going with something like the Fractal Meshify C for a bit more airflow, a lot of PC build guides feature RGB lights, RAM and fans, and this will put the price up a little, so keep that in mind. So how did the PC build go? It turned on! <laughs> I was surprised that it worked since I'm not really a techie sort of person, but it does feel good to know that I built it myself and that I could do it again if I needed to. I followed a couple of build guide videos that really helped me out when I was overwhelmed with all the different part instructions and manuals and small bags of screws that seemed to multiply whenever I looked away for a second. When it worked, my family were all very impressed, but considering my parents forget how to attach a file to an email and always ask me how to copy and paste things, you can take that how you will. That's not to say that I built the PC all in one go and it was perfect and flawless and stress-free because I was a little bit stressed when the CPU fan I'd ordered was too big and I couldn't 
get the glass panel back on the case. I didn't want to force it and break anything, so I switched that out for a smaller version with 120 millimeter fans, and thankfully that did fit once I screwed in the mounting brackets the right way. Plugging in the cables required patience, and minus my panic over a random cable that I didn't actually need in the end, it didn't take too long. Plus, there were plenty of zip ties that came with the motherboard to tidy everything up in the back, so it doesn't look too much like a rat's nest back there. Now, you're probably wondering, where is the monitor? Well, I spent everything I had on actual PC parts when I should have set some aside to get a good quality screen. As an animator, I need to make sure that my images are crisp and clear and everything looks good. I had planned on using my screen tablet, which is a Wacom Cintiq 13 HD and a spare monitor from my sister until I had decided on which monitor to get myself. But as I was picking out parts and things, BenQ very kindly sent me this 32 inch 4K monitor made specifically for creatives. It was easy to assemble, it came with a variety of cables to choose from, and I can adjust the height, tilt it up, down, and even switch the screen from horizontal to vertical viewing if I need to. The size is great for editing my videos, there's plenty of space to have multiple windows open when I'm streaming, and the colours are perfect. It also comes with a puck that has programmable buttons and a ton of different lighting modes to choose from. My favourites being MacBook, animation, and the low blue light choices, which really helps when I'm working late. If I'm ever using my MacBook and am tired of squinting, all I need to do is use a single cable and get to work. So I really do love this monitor and I'm so grateful that BenQ sent it to me because my budget wouldn't have stretched that far. In order to be totally transparent with you guys, uh, I want to let you know that I have had some trouble with some of the ports on the side and underneath. They don't seem to want to connect to my phone, USBs, hard drives, and I had some trouble using the screen when I wanted to install Windows onto my actual PC and it wouldn't turn on no matter what cable or input I used on the monitor, so I had to hook it up to my TV. Now, I am in conversation with the guys over at BenQ and they have been super nice and understanding and we are seeing if we can fix it or if we're gonna get a replacement, but obviously with everything that's going on at the minute, I don't wanna put any extra pressure on delivery services and the post office, so I'll let you know what happens with that. Aside from that, this is a good quality monitor and I would recommend it. If you're interested in checking out the series, there are a range of prices to suit all budgets and I will leave a link in the description. Obviously, you don't have to spend this much on an animation PC. What I need may be different to what you're looking for, but the good thing about building your own is that it allows you to customise and upgrade parts in the future if you need to. I don't regret building this PC at all. Animating is my job. I make YouTube videos and stream at least once a week. And any time I can save in that process, it's time that I can put into the next video or next thing that I want to make. There's plenty of build guides you can watch on YouTube for something that's more in your price range. Let me know if you've got any questions. Big thank you to BenQ for sending me this monitor to review. And thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more animations and tutorials from me, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to know when I post, and I will be back with another video real soon. Bye!